What's going on guys, it's Simo. So today I want to bring you a discussion on the problem with the extra link. Now, doesn't it seem crazy that it was only a year ago that link summoning was just released and extra linking seemed like this foreign concept because how on earth were we ever gonna summon five plus monsters that were gonna be co-linked to each other to be able to steal our opponent's extra monster zone? Well, kind of funny now, fast forward a year that we're at where we are and we're absolutely dreading this mechanic, but I kind of wanted to dive a little bit deeper, see how we got to this point, and discuss what some of the long-term implications of this mechanic are going to be, and what some of my biggest fears are moving forward. But before we get into it, I just want to give a big shout out to my newest supporters through the YouTube channel membership, and that's going to be I'm So Angry, as well as Jay. You guys are the reason that this channel is growing strong. And if you guys want to help support me in the channel through a YouTube channel membership, hit the join button down below, or check out the links in the description. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. I want to take you guys back to the very, very young infant stages of Yu-Gi-Oh! Back to when a lot of us veteran players would call it the golden age of Yu-Gi-Oh! This is back in 2004-2005 when GOAT format, or what's become known as GOAT format, was pretty much in full effect. Back then, Yu-Gi-Oh! was played a lot differently. We didn't have archetypes. You know, you kind of just took the strongest generic cards that were available at the time, mash them into a single deck, and guess what? It just happened to work because each of these cards on their own were so individually powerful that they just contributed to the ultimate goal of creating a very strong deck. And as time progressed on, we did start to get archetypes introduced to the game. You know, there were grave keepers, there were like dark scorpions, monarchs started to slowly come along as well, but these weren't entire decks. These were kind of like like cards that went together, but you weren't going to build an entire deck based around any of these individual archetypes, if you can even call them that, back in the time. Now what happened was, as we accelerate forward a little bit, we started to get the introduction of true archetypes. Decks that you take all these cards of a specific theme, they actually comprise of a cohesive strategy, and basically like 70 to 80 percent of your deck was going to be cards from the specific archetype. I'm talking stuff like Gladiator Beasts, Light Sworn, I mean I could start going on and on, but these decks also had win conditions. I mean, if you saw Heraclinos dropping on your opponent's field if you're going up against Glad Beast, you probably lost that game. Same thing goes for something like Judgment Dragon in Light Sworn. If Light Sworn was dropping JD on you, you probably just fucking lost. It was very similar to having BLS dropped on you back in GOAT format. Difference is, BLS was a generic or pretty much generic monster that you were playing if your deck had the Chaos attributes, but these monsters were more restricted by their given archetype, and that wasn't necessarily a bad thing, it was just kind of one of the ways that the deck could function. As time progressed, we started to see more and more archetypes get introduced, and some of these decks had boss monsters as win conditions, and others did not, but they were still very effective. I mean, we started seeing stuff like Black Wings, Girgia, Fire Fist, Mermail, the list goes on and on. But one thing that we did see in common is essentially the establishment of win conditions, and most notably, win conditions that effectively relied on locking your opponent out of playing the game in order to win. And this was usually established on like turn one or two, so there wasn't really any interactivity. An example of a win condition that didn't require a boss monster was a deck like Bujins. Bujins could just summon Yamato, do a couple things, add a Kaiser Coliseum to their back row, and you probably just lost that game because getting over a Bujin Yamato with a Kaiser Coliseum active was one of the most difficult things to do at the time and, and ultimately resulted in Kaiser Coliseum's ban just because it was so degenerate and locked people out from being able to play the game. A more modern strategy, which came only a few years later, was the introduction of Apocalypse 4 Towers. This was an in-archetype boss monster that was searchable, easily summonable on turn one, and basically if it hit the field, your opponent had zero chance of being able to out it, and that was pretty much not very fun. Yeah, there was like very small minor applications as time went on for ways to out it, but at the time, it was very, you know, just looked down upon because it was 
was like, well, guess you summon towers, can't really do anything because it was impervious to all effects at the time. It was able to just destroy card. Like it was just an absolute behemoth of a card to deal with. And it wasn't fun. And that's kind of the point of trying to drive home here is that when a deck has a win condition that essentially locks your opponent out from being able to play the game entirely, especially if it's a built in engine win condition, that doesn't really make for interactive and exciting gameplay. I mean, Yu-Gi-Oh! is supposed to be an interactive card game that has multiple players. And if you strip the interactivity out of it, well, that doesn't really make for a fun experience. Now we get to the introduction of Link Monsters. And it is undeniable that Link Monsters had a tremendous impact on the game. I mean, Link Monsters essentially forced themselves to integrate into the game because they restricted every other summoning mechanic so heavily Synchro, Xyz, Pendulum, I mean, even Fusion Summoning, if we're going to go that far, just because of the fact that we have the Link Markers and the Link Arrows. You also had the fact that Link Summoning also made Zone Placement very important, which is something that never really mattered before. Cyber Dark Impact tried to make Zones matter, but it was just a complete and utter failure. Link Summoning and Link Monsters in general kind of forced these column placements to matter, and that was a really big deal and was a very big learning curve for a lot of players to get used to. One thing that was really nice about Link Monsters, though, was the return to generic monsters. Now, yes, we've had generic Synchro Monsters, we've had generic Xyz Monsters, but they weren't truly generic because we had these cards that, you know, were easy to summon, but they were still restricted by level. I mean, Synchros, you had to add up to a particular level. Xyz Monsters, you had to have two of the same level. You know, it was a little bit restricting from that standpoint, but when it comes to Link Monsters, Link Monsters are some of the easiest extra deck monsters to summon because yeah, sometimes they require maybe specific types or specific attributes, but that's a lot easier to pull off than having monsters of the same level or monsters of specific levels adding up to one another. Not to mention some of the best link monsters in the game are generic and basically require like just effect monsters or monsters of different names. And that's exactly where I'm heading now. We have these link monsters that have essentially enabled a very generic toolbox that a lot of decks can easily access. And I think this is a really nice thing. I think one of the things I love about Yu-Gi-Oh! is when these generic cards do exist, that a lot of different decks can take advantage of that. I mean, let's take a look at the Nightmares. The Nightmares, while very controversial, actually have done the game a lot of good. I mean, every deck now that has the ability to Link Summon, which is pretty much all of them, if we're being honest, now have access to monster removal, spell and trap removal, the ability to spin stuff back to the deck, extra normal summons, and also the ability just to like skill drain the opponent and reset your resources to your field. That's an amazing toolbox of monsters at a deck's disposal, and it's really easy to summon these monsters out. Look back to cards like Tornado Dragon. You know, you had to have two level four monsters in order to make it, and depending on the deck, that might not be difficult, but it was really bad for the decks that weren't level four based because then they weren't able to access a card as generic and powerful as Tornado Dragon, so it wasn't really fair to the other decks where the Nightmares don't have that problem. And I think that's really cool because I think it strips away some of the variance in the game because now you're not hoping to draw your spot removal. Now you're not hoping to draw like your Brilliant Fusion the instance of Nightmare Goblin. Now you're not hoping to draw that spell and trap removal when your opponent has, you know, a particular floodgate. If you can access Nightmare Phoenix, you're able to pop a spell and trap that might be hindering you from being able to play the game. And I think that's very beneficial for a lot of decks to have at their disposal. The problem is when we get to the extra link, because the extra link, if you think about it, is not really too much different than Summon Bujin Yamato, Activate Kaiser Coliseum Pass, or something like Summon Apocalyphore Towers Pass, because it's essentially creating a game state where your opponent can't play the game, and you're just denying your opponent of an entire mechanic of the game, not to mention that mechanic is so crucial to how the game is played, considering the fact that you have to basically make link monsters in order to access any other monsters in your extra deck, especially if you want to continue comboing off with your plays. Extra linking by stripping away that entire mechanic mechanic really makes it degenerate, especially when you're going up against other decks that require use of the extra deck because you're completely denying your opponent the ability from being able to use their extra deck, which means they basically can't play the game. And it's really not that different from those older strategies, which
which we've actually seen action taken against them on the ban list, both with Kaiser Coliseum and the banning of Apocalypse Four Towers, even though now it is no longer on the ban list. But that just goes to show how we've evolved past that, and it really doesn't even matter anymore. When you have the extra link in general, though, there's another application here, and that goes back to the Nightmares, because not only is the extra link something that a lot of decks have to deal with, the Nightmares add another layer on top of that, and that is the fact that they bestow protection from a myriad of different effects. I mean, you've got Phoenix protecting from battle, you've got Cerberus protecting from destruction, you've got Goblin protecting from targeting, Unicorn's gonna draw you cards equal to the number of co-links, which means you're drawing like five cards for your fucking draw phase, which, yeah, that seems really fair. And the issue here is dealing with the extra link on its own probably isn't that big of a deal. I mean, yeah, it's gonna have a Trigate Wizard, but it's a lot easier to just have to deal with a Trigate Wizard than having to deal with a Trigate Wizard. Oh, but by the way, you can't target or destroy any of my cards with card effects or by battle, in addition to having to deal with my Trigate Wizard. That really limits the options that players have in order to deal with these extra links, and I think that's what just furthers the degeneracy when it comes to the extra link mechanic in general. My biggest fear is that we're going to evolve to a place where Yu-Gi-Oh! basically gets down to who can extra link their opponent first and how fast can you do it? Because right now, the fact that we have these generic link monsters, while it's kind of a good thing, it's really bad because it enables all of these other decks to be able to extra link. And you could say, oh, well, sure, you know, ban Firewall Dragon, ban Nightmare Goblin. I don't think that's going to be enough because eventually I think we're just going to get either more generic link monsters that are going to make extra linking even easier than we see it now or you're going to get more archetype specific link monsters that are going to enable extra linking a lot easier but within their own given archetype and the issue with this at least for me personally is that every deck that takes advantage of link summoning basically just has the same win condition. It comes down to not who played their cards better, it comes down to who extra linked who first, how fast did you do it, or who didn't open the hand trap to stop the extra link from occurring. I mean, that's kind of what we see with Goki and Goki mirror matches at the moment. If one player didn't open a hand trap and the other player opened the combo, well, they just immediately scoop and go to game two because there's no point to play that game. And I really don't want Yu-Gi-Oh to devolve to that point because that's not really fun. I mean, I actually like Link Summoning. It's come to grow on me, and I like decks that can take advantage of the extra deck and Link Monsters, you know, like Trickstar, Sky Striker, Pure Sky Striker. I mean, really these decks that, you know, don't abuse the mechanic, but can do some really cool things without it getting to the point where it's just, you know, there's no interactivity. I think that's actually a lot of fun, not when a Goki player just opens a two card combo that means, oh, I just can't play the game unless I open the perfect combination of cards to be able to out your board, or because I didn't open a hand trap, I lose. That doesn't make for fun gameplay. Even when you have decks like stun decks, like Inspector Border Stun or True Draco, where they don't need an extra deck to compete, they're still at such a disadvantage compared to all these other decks that they're going to be power crept out of existence eventually because, yeah, they can run like 10 to 15 floodgates, but the fact that they have to run so many cards to basically bring these decks down to their level in order for them to compete that doesn't exactly spell a healthy competitive environment. That just shows that the format is so out of control that they need to curb the power of the extra link or just make it so it's not nearly as degenerate in order for the game to be in a much healthier state. Extra linking is bad, don't get me wrong, but I think what makes it worse is the fact that you have these multiple layers of protection from the nightmares in addition to the fact that you already are locked out from being able to use a basic summoning mechanic from the entire game. It's just no worse than getting floodgated at that point, but it's even worse than that because you can't even out the floodgate unless you have a very, very specific out in order to do so. It's actually not that bad if you just had to play through a Trigate Wizard because I'd say a lot of decks can probably play through a single negation, but at the same time, by doing so, you play through that negation, you slowly start picking apart your opponent's board, you can start building your own, and then you have some fairly interesting and interactive gameplay and rather than someone just scooping up their cards because they didn't open a hand trap to stop you or because they didn't open their very specific out like Cyber Dragon or Sphere Mode to break your extra link. I'm just really nervous 
about where this is going to lead into the future. The fact that we're seeing stuff like Vendred Extra Links, fucking Fortress Whale Extra Links, like, I don't even know where the game is going at this point, but I really hope that Konami just takes notice and really just tries to curb the power of the Extra Links so that it isn't as easy to achieve because the last thing I think a lot of us want is just a simple die roll game of who opened an Extra Link combo or who didn't open a hand trap. That doesn't really sound fun and I don't think a lot of us really want that. But guys, those are just my thoughts. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about extra linking as a mechanic. I'd really love to hear your thoughts. So guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Be sure to like the video as always. Subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. And if you found this video informative, consider becoming a YouTube channel member because just by showing your support in any way that you can, you're investing in my ability to continue bringing you amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. So thanks so much again, and we'll see you next time.